Hey everybody, John Lake Erie Chestnuts with an update here in the middle of July 2022. We're going to show you the different types of insects that sit on chestnut blossoms. It's not your honeybee and it's not butterflies. It's all the, uh, not the fancy flies. Let's come and look at this. So we'll come over and zoom in. I got a camera guy today, so we're going to come in and zoom in on this. I thought this one was pretty unique. Let's look right here. Let's zoom in, come over here, bring the camera, and tap right on that area. Is that clear where my finger is? Mm -hmm. That is a baby lightning bug. <laughs> Looking behind here, you got a little ant. Ants love these these uh, chestnuts. You got a little guy flying around, tiny little lightning bug. You look at all these beautiful burrs. You see these burrs. These burrs are basically past the point of fertilization at this point. They're right maybe they could get, still be fertilized but they're 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 real soft you can touch them right now but those blossoms they're laying out flat maybe they could still be fertilized maybe get a little tap tap there uh but still some you know fertilization av available here uh you, you can see the male catkin has plenty of pollen the again these are wind pollinated and it happens over two to three weeks so this guy this blossom's almost done, but plenty of burrs on this tree of Qing heritage. We'll let this one go up. This is the tree that we've shown you that we finally freed from its uh, cage, and it'll be losing this branch once production is done at the end of the season. So we'll take a walk here through the orchard, and we're just going to look at some more insects. Five, ten more trees. We'll just kind of pause about right here and we'll just kind of pan through the orchard. We'll tap on the sky there so that it's nice and beautiful. This beautiful evening. You can hear the low rumble of four wheelers and dirt bikes in the background. With threatening rain, but we haven't had rain. Okay, now we're at a tree. This was listed as a Kenzel. We've talked about this before, uh, but it's probably Shing. Uh, uh, based on some information given to me by Mr. James Nave, uh, this is probably Shing, not Kenzel. Uh, but uh, we'll zoom in on the blooms of this tree and see what we have here. So we'll zoom in right here. We'll start with a ladybug. Let me come on in. And we got a ladybug right here. You know, tap on right where my finger is. Get us a zoom in on top of them all sorts of ants along with a burr and if you've been following my page it's a facebook page lake erie chestnuts also in at lake erie chestnuts on instagram you'll see that i this same tree had all sorts including wasps uh flying around it all sorts of blossoms got a just a regular old house fly like i said all sorts of crazy things on this thing. And another weird yellow winged fly here. People talk about the smell of chestnuts and I've smelt them before, but uh, there's not a ton of smell of these blossoms at this point, not, not in the orchard. We're gonna zoom in up here. We've got a nice Japanese beetle. We don't have a huge presence of Japanese beetles, but maybe they'll get more. You see them upside down here. He likes to drop. We'll give them a how do you do there with the old toe of a boot. And we've got another one here. You can zoom in on the, the old Japanese beetle here. He's got his legs up. He dropped. Maybe you didn't get him on there. We'll drop him even further. Make him climb. But if you see up there, they're just flying everywhere. We'll go on to this next tree, same variety. These trees produce large numbers of nuts, good sized nuts, and have produced very early. And this one, they got a little more, look here, zoom up here, get this one before. You know, the old, the old mating habits of Japanese beetles. I'm gonna make them all fall. They're gonna have someone rock their bedroom, earthquake. 
I'm gonna have to work down there. Yeah, let's see if we got any burrs on this one. Bring them on down. What do we got here? You can see the blossoms almost done and then we got more going, lots of burrs. You see those there? Now the interesting thing, zoom in on this right here. This is last year's growth. And from right here, we have all this growth. Chestnuts grow on this year's growth. So that's why it's important. You can get additional growth off of side branching and get burrs, but that's why tre chestnut trees can't touch side branches. If you grow in, if their canopy grows in to each other, you will get reduced production because they'll only produce from the top. They produce on their outermost growth. So if you have them too close together, they will grow in, your harvest will go way down. So that's why we're on a 30 foot section here. Look, get a pan through that. Tap on the back uh, sky. Get that golden, the Timothy hay. Has this beautiful gold in this late evening. Freaking beautiful. So we'll do a little tree diagnosis here if I'm able. I don't know if I'll be able to diagnose it, but this tree was in trouble on a couple videos. I, I talked about it turning green, you know, the leaves looked like they had a problem. And it's got to start here and something has just hammered the leaves off of it. But it's got a pretty successful shoot here. Let's look at the, the stump of this tree. See if we can get an answer as to why she ain't growing well. You come on over here. We're just looking in here. Okay, this is the problem with this tree. We'll come over to this side. There. Got my cameraman here, Eric. Look right here. This is why this tree is not doing well. See that bark? There's a wasp nest somewhere in here. That's right. That's right by your hand. Oh boy. Sorry. And coming out after me. But did you zoom in on there? Got wasp coming after me, but I'm gonna move that over. See that? Zoom in on that bark. You see that bark? Mm -hmm. That tree got some some buck love and tore the cambium layer too much so that's not blight that's a uh, white tail buck love that's the problem we're going to talk about there so this tree will be just fine it's already got a shoot taller than me i'll leave that there it'll wiggle down over time i'm not real interested in being stung by a wasp i will leave this dead here until it gets good and dead and i'll just whack that off here late this year next year put a new tube on it and that tree should do just fine it's a shame but you know i'm trying to work with nature i'm not going to fence it off i know production would be much higher i would have that problem no longer but i like big bucks and i can't lie about that anyway i thought you guys would enjoy seeing the less popular bugs that love chestnuts it's not I, I some people do chestnut honey but honestly i've never seen a honeybee on my chestnuts i see honeybee all over my clover all over buckwheat but they just don't like my chestnuts i get ants wasps house flies other flies uh ladybugs but we don't get butterflies and bees in this part we get those off in the milkweed and the the Shasta daisies and the roses that we have along in these 20 foot strips that we have between the rows. So thanks for following me here. Lake Erie Chestnuts mid July update. Hope everything's going well with you and yours. Post pictures if you got them. Remember, if you're not out there growing, you're dying. Thanks for following us here. Lake Erie Chestnuts. Huh? Well, I guess that's your ties. I think it's better without the hat, but... Yeah. All right. All right.
just hit start whenever. Oh, it's been rolling. Stop it and start it.